In Trinidad and Tobago, there's a tradition of return. This tradition started long before Christopher Columbus visited our shores, which resulted in Spain settling on the island. The First Nation people were the first to settle in different parts of the country. They were the first to visit and return to settle. The French and the Dutch people also followed suit. But what is it that holds the multitude of interests of so many people of different nations throughout the ages? What is it that influences them to continue to return? Although for some, food is enough reason to keep visiting our country, we suggest that our unique styles and blend of music is a good reason to visit and return. Meet Hugh Masekela, master trumpet player and flugel hornist. South African-born musician Hugh Masekela finds inspiration from the creative genius of our people. In Trinidad and Tobago, our music represents our country in several ways. It has transformed into social and political commentary in song through Calypso. It has a Spanish tradition of parang that extends over centuries. It transitioned its Indian music into chutney. However, for this musician, it was the sweet strains of steel pan that first caught his attention and maintained it for a decade. No one who invented music has got to be terrific, got to be the one who created the sun. Well, I think that we have to go right to the beginning, you know, in 2005. When we came to play the San Fernando Jazz um, uh, Festival is when I first saw Zander and the Deltones, the Superior Deltones. And like the way they played uh, the Calypso and soccer classics, you know, that everybody loves. And the way they had them voiced and their style and all, it was very different from how I know the pans. And it had like a lot of like, um, great big band uh, style arrangements uh, but at the same time it was like jazz and it was not loud and um, um, it was what we were transfixed myself the percussionist and uh, the, our bass player we were just completely transfixed like and the guitar player like wow you know we'd never seen it and i'd never seen anything like that and there was also the way they moved together when <laughs> You know, and uh, um, I was like a, a kid in a toy shop and I said to Zander when they came up, I would definitely, surely love to be part of what you're doing. I don't you know. And, uh, I'm, I'm an old fan of Calypso music, you know, because I heard it in 1960 when I first got to England. I met um, um, a girl from uh, Barbados, a Bajan girl who was uh, an intern as a doctor. But she loved Sparrow and I'd never, she said, you never heard of Sparrow? I said, come on, who's Sparrow? And then she started playing me the music and she taught me the dance. And we had a great summertime uh, love affair, but I, I really fell in love with the words and the style, you know. And, and it is something that was related not only to high life, but to like the township music of where I come from. But I can't forget. No, no, no. Yuma Sekela found himself continuing the tradition of return, as this would not be his first or last trip to Trinidad and Tobago. With his muse being the Del Tone Steel Band Orchestra, the synergy created between them led to the formulation of an idea. And then uh, Akinola, and of course the band too, they just loved the idea, but at the time we were just talking. And then they, for the last nine years, they followed it through and they, they went and uh, hustled the idea here and there and everywhere. Last year they came to the St. Lucia Jazz Festival, Akinola and Zander showed up there. Mm. And they said, we think we have the thing. Uh, uh, on course now, the plan on course, and uh, we should just like identify a time to do this with you. Um, and then um, uh, um, I identified May. 
happiness and I'm gonna come and spend the whole month there with you and um, let's see where we take it and what we can do so um, I've been like a student also of the style of music and uh, and it just is mouth watering and Zanda is like an amazing he knows how to design everything that is an architect might not be a, 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 a coincidence but he really understands the music of uh, um, um, of the style you know and he grew up with it and, and he designs the harmonies and everything even with the pans and uh, and it's just delicious, you know, it's just I feel like a pig in dirty mud. Our country offers so many possibilities along with a skill set and talent base that was so natural and rampant in the country that renowned musician Hugh Masekela felt encouraged to produce an international album. One. Introducing the main players for this ambitious project. Carlton Alexander, better known as Zanders. He is the main musical architect and arranger of the music on the album. A certified musical genius. Akinola Senon, pan soloist extraordinaire, leader of the Superia Deltones, the main point man for the organization of this project. Superia Deltones Steel Orchestra, one of Trinidad and Tobago's top performing fusion steel bands. Zahir. Top Trinidadian sound engineer brought on board for the purpose of ensuring that the recording is of international standard. A wealth of knowledge, experience, and skills. And of course, Hugh Masekela, master trumpet player, Grammy Award winner, human rights champion, a true legend in the jazz world, producer of this album. All arrangements were made to ensure that Mr. Masekela's vision of a fusion of our unique musical stylings would come into fruition. Upon his arrival in Trinidad and Tobago, Hugh Masekela visited our Minister of Arts and Multiculturalism, anxious to take care of the business aspect of the project. We consider the, uh, the Ministry of Arts and Multiculturalism a, a tremendous joy, just a joy and an opportunity and a privilege to have um, Hugh Masekela with us. As you all rightly know, Hugh Masekela is a, is a renowned um, trumpet player and musician of, um, of, of, of the highest pedigree, if you want to say that, internationally known as one of a number of um, Grammy Awards. And we think it is a, it's a real opportunity for, to have him with us here in Trinidad and Tobago, and more so to be collaborating with the steel pan. In Trinidad, we are very proud of the steel pan as our instrument, our national instrument as an instrument that has been invented here in Trinidad and Tobago, and it's been probably the only real instrument that orchestral instrument has invented in the, in the last century. And so it's an honor when we have people who are willing to participate with those projects. Here we, we're, we're so grateful, and we're so thankful for you being here. Sepaya Del Tunes has been an, an organization that has had a, a long history with um, Trinidad and Tobago in the local music industry. They are known for their, their fusion music of calypso styles and jazz and other kinds. It is, it is really a, a, a great opportunity for us here in Trinidad and Tobago to have this. The Ministry of Arts and Multiculturalism will be participating you know, wholeheartedly and in a, in, in a number of ways to, to, um, to make this project a reality and, I, uh, and to make it happen and to follow the project through to its completion or to its fruition, you know. So 
you know, in other words, to make sure that the project is the best that it could be. Uh, uh, the most exciting thing is that we've been on the music every day. Um, uh, Zanda is just like, a, I don't want to um, sing any praises, but what he does with the music and his vision of it is like, for me, the dream that I thought that uh, we could like put together. And I think we're going to put together a, um, um, a very enjoyable and um, very uh, um, a high standard production um, of um, mostly um, very well known Trinidadian classics. With the local costs offset by the government's assistance, the artists were now able to dedicate themselves to creating music. The first six days entails the organizing of the main team and the laying down of as many guide tracks as possible within that time frame. When I got the call from Akinola and, and stuff and he said you man I want to record I was kind of like okay. First I thought it was just a live recording so maybe we would have done it was this studio because like I can see I almost have this doorman for some years now. Touring and all that kind of thing. And um, I was a bit apprehensive to tell you the truth because I knew I mean, of his name and all that kind of thing, and his body of work. So, when he came in, and we actually set up for the recording, the first recording, I still was pretty much doubtful that it would actually come off. But we was, we so happened to pull the best people together locally, um, in terms of session musicians like uh, the drummer, outstanding drummer Alpha and the bassist, and, and, and the band itself, the Deltos, which was like exceptionally good. And the first day, we set up everything, mic up everything. Hugh came in, and I could see he was probably apprehensive, just coming in this kind of backward, so to speak, place in Faisabad area. I was like, wow, we come to the bush here, right? And um, from the first drum sound in literally 10 minutes, he was smiling. He was, he was on the phone with some one of his friends from LA or something like that. And he was saying, um, obviously, they ain't trying to have So I was telling my friend, you know, the lifelong friend who produced most of my records, like grazing in the grass and the crusader. He called me this evening, so I said, how is it going? I said, uh, well, finally we started recording and it's just fantastic. He was one of the greatest producers, so I wish I was there. And that was a real proud moment for me. I mean, after so much, getting so much of well, accolades in the past and all that kind of thing and people talking stuff, to hear that from him and he was really genuine, because I swear he would have left if things was not up. I'm sure. Uh, Zahir, the, the engineer, worked with him for a couple of hours because setting up the drums and the right sound and making them really sound. But um, the engineer, Zahir, really knows what he's doing. Working with him as a killer was a blessing. The harmony between, it was like if we knew each other before, the harmony between us. Transferring that harmony from music into just into physical life, you know, from notes into into this okay. physical response. Right. <laughs> I, I, I can ask some more. This is very good. Powerful lecture. You're gonna put maybe put some some other things inside. Oh yeah, inside yeah. Shakers. Yeah, shakers. Yeah. That's right. 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 But that, that's the horn line in the song. Right. The whole area. We just shift it a bit. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it, it it brings back like that somewhere somewhere inside the song we should stay. State in that. Yeah. You know, and yeah. at the end probably. Also. Yeah. That's right. The corner. Over the over the boom boom. You know. Da 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 da. Dum da do da dum dum da di da. We find the right place yeah. to put it. Yeah. Dum dum. Yeah. Dum dum. Dum dum. That nice. See that eh? Yeah. That's a nice detail. Nice. The bass rocking. The guitar.
Meanwhile, Deltone Steel Orchestra is in the midst of a two-week intensive musical camp in which they prepare for their parts in the upcoming recording. On the eighth day, the Superior Deltone Steel Orchestra moves into Sapa. is taken to change the traditional format of recording steel bands. If you plan to package this in the way that I always thought part should be packaged as part of a, a, a part of a song, not necessarily the whole nine yards where you have every aspect of a band, uh, every type of band as, a, as the final record, he have it as instruments within a song. The vocalists meet for the first time. They have only two days to learn all of the songs for the album. This includes remembering all of the harmonies as well as the intricate nuances of Xander's arrangements. time they were also visited by Ms. Alicia Jagasar, one of Trinidad and Tobago's premier parang vocalists. Ms. Jagasar will be lead vocalist on one of the songs on the album. The Daisy Voise classic is no que paso. Oh, 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 oh. 
with rehearsals now over, the vocalists move into the studio to lay down their tracks. Here we get a rare glimpse of Hugh at work as a producer. enlightening experience he makes it he makes it even easy even though sometimes as we feel like we don't understand he has a way of softening it up and making you want to continue to do it so it makes it easy to work with him it's a joy working with him as a Every note, every chord is very important. It becomes quite clear to all that they are in the presence of a true legend and just how hard working, diligent, and focused he is at the task at hand. This is not oh 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 yeah one more time knowing that time is against them they press into the project doing all that is necessary to conduct the final recordings Okay, now you're fighting it. It has to be much softer because we're going to double it and triple it. Ooh, so like, make it light. Okay, no? No, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Somebody is singing a wrong note in the second one. Why you leave and go? All I can say is let's quadruple that one. No, I'm kidding. Thank you very much. Thank you. That other part, that's it, right? But Q was reminiscent of what I, what I personally used to. That strong mood, okay, I think from, even from the older bars in Trinidad, I mean the brothers and the shadows, and when they come in to work, they would work. I'm not quite sure the younger crop of people are. I mean, that's a lot of my age as well. But I don't have things so accessible now, because everybody in the studio now, they don't cherish the, the quality time when they get a chance to be in a studio. And they might be too, too laid back. And that is already our culture, as mentioned before. But Hugh was reminiscent of all the, the good artists. And, and you'd find out the, the real true professionals are the easiest people to work with. You may think they would have egos and stuff, but that, that, that is not true at all. The percussionists are now called in for their session. All of their instruments are tuned, prepped and ready to go. Steel pans are also brought into the studio a few at a time, and individual tracks begin to be laid. Huma 
Masekela envisions the use of our traditional East Indian and African instruments, both blended within the various musical tracks. All at the same time, maintaining a strong presence of our national instrument of pride, the steel pan. Can't forget. No, no, no. Reading about something and seeing it in motion, the real deal is still different. So when I sat there and read about a book sent out to my own thing. No, no, no. And, um, but seeing it in person is two other things, you know? Then do the do so you get that at sixteen bars. Then I come in. Don't get excited towards the end. Keep okay. the same cool under the mango tree. Okay. Yeah, yeah? <laughs> Long after everyone else has gone, Hugh finally takes the time to lay his vocals and, of course, his instrument tracks. Life is a journey, we all have to travel and go. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay. We are not so that he can't worry you. Michael Jackson has some kind of influence on somebody sometime. Bernie Goldman was ma Michael's master and engineer. He's a legend, multiple Grammy award winner. He actually going and touched something that was recorded in Trinidad. A lot of Trinidad musicians played on it. And that is something to look forward to. If it's just, I mean, just the novelty of it. Plus, some of these songs are locally uh, indigenous folk type songs. That amazing as well. Um, and some of the younger artists. They could really, really learn from it, and that might be the start of some, some other hybrid type of music that we could export. Who knows? Because the BPM of these things are really, really palatable as compared to the 160 and 165 that we are accustomed to, um, which is really hard to break internationally. This is something that would actually have our ind indigenous instrument in the, the, the BPM, the tempo of the songs. Anybody in any culture across the world would appreciate. I, I think um, this is something that we could actually use as some kind of template we're moving forward and incorporate our local genres, both soca and whatever, chutney and all that kind of thing, and, and take something from our and, and look at the entire production and, and learn something from it. I can't wait to hear what, what the, the guy who is mixing in South Africa would do to leave it. When it left here, I was pleased. More it passed my expectations, but he was huge as well. So I can't imagine what the song is going to come out. So we did the music, I got from the Kaiser thing and the parent thing, and some of the chocolate thing, the folk thing. So but we have a restoration of, you know, the heritage basically from a musical perspective. And what we will do now is take the album and say, hey, with proper institution, 
look at what could be produced on the world market in a quantitative form. This album is proof of what could be presented at the world market in a quantitative form. Thank you, Trinidad. <laughs> thank you, Zanda. Thank you, Vaughn. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Akinola, and this is Akin, <laughs> and everybody in Trinidad. It's been wonderful, and I'll be back. We made wonderful music, and uh, we're on the road to a great, um, I think, a major revival of uh, the beauty of Trinidad, Trinidadian melody. <laughs> so, um, thank you, I'll be back. Don't eat all the mangoes. <laughs> Save some for me. The synergy created from Hugh Masekela's first encounter with the Deltone Steel Band Orchestra is strengthened like a fine wine over time. And Hugh has now become a willing, enthusiastic participant in the tradition of return. Some said it was impossible. Some believed it was just a dream, a myth, to assemble masters of their craft all working together to produce a truly beautiful piece of art. Something unique, yet distinctly Caribbean. The fusion of Afro-East Indian Caribbean blends to create a masterful work of jazz, something the world can enjoy for years to come. See